Hi, I'm Micah Clark, and as you know, next week is 4th of July, and with that being on a Thursday, many people may be on vacation next week, so we wanted to post this video today about the history of 4th of July from our friends at Wall Builders. It's a short video. I think you'll enjoy it if you love history. It talks a little bit about what 4th of July means, what it meant to our founders, how important it is, and some history about it from some sayings from different founders about the 4th of July. I think you'll enjoy this. Maybe you want to show it to your family. It's only about nine minutes long. Again, hope you enjoy it. I'm Micah Clark, American Family Association of Indiana. Hey guys, probably no surprise, one of my favorite holiday celebrations in America is 4th of July. As we look at the 4th of July, it's a little sad. A lot of people don't even know what the 4th of July is really about. I mean, we know kind of like food and fireworks, maybe some family, which all those are great things. Obviously, there's a lot more involved. For those of you who have paid attention, or if you know Wall Builders, what we do with American history, with original documents, the 4th of July really is a big deal, and it really goes back to the Founding Fathers. This is known as the Presentation of the Declaration. This is the Committee of Five who did the Declaration. You have Franklin and Jefferson and Adams and Sherman and Livingston. Well, Jefferson, at this point, they are presenting the original draft of the Declaration. This is the first printing of the original draft of the Declaration of Independence, where Jefferson wrote four pages explaining and outlining for the Founding Fathers to argue, debate, agree on why we were wanting to separate. And in case people are wondering, like trivia, why, why were we even separating on the 4th of July? We were announcing, we declared our independence from Great Britain and specifically from King George. This is an actual document with King George's signature right up here at the top. So really cool stuff. This is who we're separating from. Unfortunately, a lot of people today don't even know who we're separating from. So when you're together, maybe it's 4th of July time, maybe it's, it's just in general with family. It could be fun to ask them some trivia, like who did America declare our independence from? Or how many people actually signed the Declaration of Independence? That was 56. And who were they? One of the things that we have done is we've worked to collect writings from virtually every signer of the Declaration, every signer of the Constitution, anybody who's considered a founding father, we've tried to collect their writings. I have in front of me some of the Bibles actually from these specific founding fathers. One of the things that people don't really know today is, is what motivated the founding fathers. And by their own writing, a lot of it was their Christian faith. It was a big impetus for why they did what they did. There used to be textbooks where we would study this. This is a reprint of an 1848 public school textbook called The Lives of the Signers of the Declaration of Independence. It used to be in public school. People had to learn all 56 signers of the Declaration knew who they were, and, and, and then we wouldn't have really believed in previous generations some of the lies and nonsense being told about them because we knew who they were. This is another public school textbook called The Wives of the Signers of the Declaration of Independence. These are both things that we've reprinted at Wall Builders. This was another public school textbook. Not only did people have to, to know the signers and who they were and what they did, we even knew about their wives. We, we used to know their stories. And we knew their stories. We knew there was so much more to them than what we often hear today, where when they signed the Declaration, the, the closing statement on the Declaration was that they were mutually pledging together their lives their fortunes and their sacred honors. Today, most people have no idea the price of freedom, the, the, the cost of founding fathers laid where many of them lost their lives or much of them gave their fortunes to the cause of liberty. Many of them died in poverty because they gave everything they had to the cause of liberty. Some of them lost their wives, their children, their sons and daughters. There was an incredible price that was paid for us to be free. John Adams actually wrote, and looking back, he was telling the rising generation, he said, you'll never know how much it cost my generation to preserve your freedom. He said, I hope you make good use of it, or I shall repent in heaven that I ever took half the pains I did to preserve your freedom. This is where when we look at freedom today, most of us don't recognize the cost of freedom. And certainly we might look at the, the modern military and we appreciate the men and women in uniform who are serving to keep us free. We appreciate the military today, but the military is working to preserve what we had given to us by the founding fathers. When, when they were part of the English nation and, and they realized there's so many problems we need to separate and they separate from Great Britain. Great Britain was the number one military power in the world at the time. And so as these guys are, are navigating what they're gonna do and how they're gonna do it, they have to form their own army. They had no army, they, they had militias and it wasn't a trained military. And, and they go through these, these very difficult winters and starving times and they don't have the proper clothes and, and Congress isn't even funding the military. The founding fathers themselves are actually funding much of the state militias. This is where the cost of freedom is much different than we think. And the founding fathers built the idea of freedom in America on some very basic principles and ideas that even in the original draft of the Declaration of Independence that Thomas Jefferson outlined, where 
phrases that we know that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain and alienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and that to secure these rights and governments exist. Where do they come up with these ideas? And this is where we can go back and look at the Bible and, and clearly recognize that these ideas came from the Bible. And it's not surprising that, that founding fathers would put Bible ideas in their documents because when you go back and see who they were and what they did, the Bible was a big part of their life. For example, this is a Bible that John Witherspoon is considered responsible for. John Witherspoon was a signer of the Declaration, and he was actually the president of Princeton University. He was recruited to be the president because he was a minister over in Scotland. He was a pastor, and they brought him to America to be the pastor in charge of Princeton. He was in charge of the School of Divinity at Princeton. He actually trained more founding fathers than any other single individual. He, he, Princeton was responsible for more founding fathers, but while he was in charge of Princeton, and he, he gave them mentors and lectures, but this Bible is one that was done for the state of New Jersey, which is where he was from. And in the front of this Bible, there's even an, an introduction, helping families know what this was about, why, why you study the Bible, what to find in the Bible. This was considered the first family Bible in America, large enough that families could gather around, they could read and study and know the Bible together. Well, a actual sign of the Declaration is responsible for this Bible, or you can go to this four volume set of the Bible. This four volume set came from Charles Thompson. He was the Secretary of Congress. If, if you go back and look at the original Declaration that was released from Congress, there's only two names on the bottom of it. It was John Hancock, right here, the President of Congress, and Charles Thompson, who was the Secretary of Congress. Well, Charles Thompson was a noted theologian. It took him 19 years to translate the entire Greek Septuagint into English, it was this four volume set, considered one of the most scholarly translations ever done by any American. This is one of the noted things that Charles Thompson did. And as a theologian, there were even many great letters where, where other founding fathers were asking him, hey, what do you think about this theological position? You can go read these guys' writings and see the impact faith had. You can go to someone like over here is Francis Hopkinson. Francis Hopkinson, the first thing I will point out is this is a two volume set of the Bible and these were owned by Francis Hopkinson. His name is in the front of them. But what's really cool is before the American Revolution, Francis Hopkinson was actually the choir director and music minister at his home church. He's responsible for this. It's the Psalms of David. Well, what he did was took the 150 Psalms and he set them all to music. And this was the first hymn book in America that had musical notations. And the musical notations were to the 150 Psalms. This was done by an actual signer of the Declaration. And we can go through things like this is one of Benjamin Rush's Bibles and, and actually from the Bible Society that Benjamin Rush helped found. This is another Bible from John Dickinson, another founding father. Uh, this Bible, this was a massive two volume set Bible. This was one that actually dozens of founding fathers actually helped fund the printing of this Bible. We literally can, can look at dozens and dozens of Bibles. Actually in the room around me, we have all kinds of writings from the founding fathers. There's proclamations behind me. The founding fathers were largely inspired by their faith. The reason they wanted freedom on the level they wanted in America is because they recognized it's actually God-given rights and, and it's our God-given freedom. And, and, and there's tyrannical government and oppression and leadership that's oppressing what's happening with, with our God-given rights. It was their faith that motivated them. It was their faith that even led them to sacrifice for their fellow man for the good of the future of America. On, on, on 4th of July, on 4th of July weekend, even as a patriotic American, as we look and Hopefully we take time to celebrate America. Hopefully you are proud to be an American. In the midst of this, we need to look back and remember the sacrifice that was made by our founding fathers. And if you want a pretty good glimpse, big picture of America, we do have a book called The American Story, where we do go through much of America. And as I identified, many Bibles came from founding fathers or prayer proclamations. And, and today, most people, we, we, we couldn't even name two or three of who these individuals were. We, we don't really know their stories. In our book, The American Story, we go through and we tell a lot of their stories. We try to introduce you to who they were, what they did, and from their own writings, we show you what they said they believed and what they said motivated them and what what they actually believed is a lot different than what we hear today. We want to encourage you. You should be proud to be an American. You should celebrate America. We hope that this is something every year. You look forward to the 4th of July in the midst of that. If you want to know more, go to wallbuilders.com. Learn about the Founding Fathers, who they were, what they did when they promised to give their lives, fortunes, and sacred honors. Not a single Founding Father backed up and backed away from that claim. They all said, yeah, we're giving everything for the cause of liberty. The reason we are free today is because of the countless individuals who have gone before us to protect and preserve freedom. The encouragement and challenge for us is, first of all, learn your history, go back, know who these people were, what they did. But then we need to be the ones standing up for the next generation 
position. So for our kids and our grandkids, they can have freedom. We got to stand up to fight and defend freedom. Have a great 4th of July. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. We always learn a lot from wall builders and it's a great resource. You can go to their website, wallbuilders.com and learn more about them. But hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you have a great 4th of July holiday next week. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm Micah Clark with the American Family Association of Indiana.